Good morning, everyone. This is Sonia Holt, your communications chairman. And I just want to tell you, welcome. We're so glad to start the summer session. It's the June Back to Basics workshop session. And um, Pam will be in here in just a minute to start the session. So I look forward to seeing all of you and welcome back. Thank you. Bye. Welcome. We are recording this meeting. And if you received a consent, go ahead and, and um, click on that if you'd like, and we will give you some instructions about how to avoid the picture moments in a few minutes as well. Welcome to the first of the 15 CFWC Summertime Back to the Basics series. We had planned two hours for each of these. We may go the full two hours. We may be a little under that, but we wanted to make sure that all of you had time to ask your questions at the end with people. We are trying to limit it to two questions if possible for everyone, that, so that would be great. We're gonna have some instruction on Zoom. We're gonna have some speakers, and then we are going to have some sharing. How many of you, just by a show of your hands, have been a recording or corresponding secretary at your club or district? Please raise your hand. Oh, good. So there'll be lots of sharing going on. I think it's going to be fun. We truthfully are having a difficult time finding people to take positions at all levels of federation in the district and in the clubs. That's part of the reason for doing the Back to the Basics series. We always seem to find a, a, at least one or more people for the positions at the state level. And that's a little different, but we wanna cover all three levels today. So we've asked for some people to come in. You are all sent an email with some supporting paperwork. We may or may not be reading from that today, but it's something that you can certainly take a look at. And when this video is available, Sonia Holtz is going to get it onto our Facebook page um, for at least a couple of days until our next Friday, which is new and incoming presidents, Zoom. And from there, it will take a little time, but we will eventually get it into Dropbox and on to our YouTube page. And she'll be able to tell you a little bit more about that. But right now I want to introduce uh, Barbara Briley Beard, your incoming president and Dean of California Federation of Women's Clubs. I am Pam, I should have said I'm Pam. You're president of California Federation <laughs> Women's Clubs. And um, Barbara, do you have anything to add? Just to say welcome, glad everybody's here today. Nice to see all the smiling faces. Looking forward to it. It Thank is, you. it is. So I'm gonna hand it over to your communications chairman right now, who is Sonia Holtz. She's gonna to talk to you about just a little housekeeping in Zoom. Sonia. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. It's so good to see all of you. I am so excited that we've started this new summer series because I need to go back to the basics. So the basics on Zoom. So let's look at how to stop your video if you need a minute to yourself. We are taking photos and we're also recording. If you choose not to have yourself on social media, you are always welcome to stop your video. How do you do that? You take your mouse, you go all the way down to the bottom left-hand side of your screen, and there's a stop video down there, and you can stop or start right from there. And then that allows us a second to take a photo so that we have something for our books, but then you get a chance to have a minute to yourself. You're all welcome to try that. You can stop and unstart right there. Now, right next to that is a mute and unmute, and you can also mute and unmute yourself right there. And you can, um, you can also use a space bar if you're using a computer. So that's up to you also. So let's talk about raising your hand. So there's a new Zoom update. And it is, uh, the newest one is 5.6.7. I put on Facebook how to do the update. If you have any questions at all, on Sunday, I have a help desk from 11 to 2 while I'm doing all the communications for the state. You are always welcome to call me, come jump in on the Zoom, and I will help you update or do whatever you need to do, okay? I don't want you to have to go and try to do it. But I have to tell you, yesterday I asked my son, and he's like, Mom, just Google it. 
<laughs> but you know how that goes. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about raising your hand. So it's no longer just a raising your hand, it's actually a reactions button. So if you go all the way down to the bottom of your screen, you will see that it's a reactions button. And we want you to practice how to raise your hand. Thank you very much. I wanna make sure everyone can participate. Now, what that does for the moderator is that puts you in a line with your hands up according to when you raise your hand. And that's how we call on everyone. So you don't need to worry about that. We do need to ask you if you cannot raise your hand, I would like you to um, wave now. And Debbie, if you could take note of anyone that cannot raise their hand. Okay. That would be fantastic. I love my teammates. They're amazing. I just keep, keep waving. Okay. And then while she's doing that, I'm going to go over the rest of the things. The second one is today with everyone that's attending, we're asking that you only ask two questions. So please keep in mind that everyone gets a chance to ask two questions and have those in mind. And then we will help you answer those today. All right. So we are doing a video. We're going to put that on Facebook. We have an update. We take a photo. You can know how to stop your hand, raise your hand, stop the video, and mute and unmute. The last one is how to rename yourself. You go to your three dots at the top right of your screen. And then you can uh, pull down your menu and you can rename yourself. Why is that important? When you're in a meeting and you're the president and you're presenting the meeting, you need to have your official name of whatever position you hold in that meeting so that they can acknowledge you. All right, back to you, Pam. Thank you very much. Thank you. This is fabulous. Now, we do have chat enabled for today. And so if you have a question, if you come across a problem where we don't see you waving and we don't see your hand up, please feel free to put that in chat. She's just finding this out, but Lynn Youngstrom will be monitoring chat. Thank you, Lynn, for, for us today. Surprise. Um, it's, I think that that is a ve another very good lesson to learn is that you cannot do Zoom by yourself. And um, it's very important that we have a team. And you know that I like to work with teams. It's, it's one of my strong points. And we always give people a chance to help when they ask to help because that's important as well. So I think that we have announced everything um, that we need to announce. And from here, I would like to introduce your two speakers for today. Um, I have asked the state recording secretary, Rita Aleman, who is a past district president for the San Gabriel Valley District. And um, she was, I met her as a Leeds representative for San Gabriel Valley District in 2000. Oh, I'm gonna say 16 or 14. I, I get my, I think it's 14, 2014. I'm trying to think when I was leadership. I think it was 14 to 16 under Chris Gonzalez in 2014. And she's going to be speaking to you about recording secretary. And um, I've also asked Tony Lima. I am so sorry. I almost called you Linda. Tony Lima to come in today and speak to us about corresponding secretary. Um, Gina Radocchio, who is our current corresponding secretary, and you received her information last night. It has a conflict today, but I wanted to make sure that we had a state representative in that position as well. So um, it may help you to put your screen in um, speaker view as opposed to gallery view. You wanna talk them through that pretty quickly. And then we will get started with Rita. You are absolutely right. I did forget that. Thank you so much, Pam. So at the top of the right-hand side of your screen, if you have a PC is a little um, thing that says view. So if you have a speaker that's a main speaker in the room, you can put it on speaker view and the person that's speaking will be your entire screen and you'll just have a small line of guests. And that gives you a chance to really see that person's face as they're speaking. The other one is gallery view. And the gallery is everyone in the room at the same time. So you have a choice on which one of those you will do. As they speak, um, I will be putting you into spotlight, which means that you will automatically see everyone as a speaker view for a while. Thank you so much. Yeah. And we do have one more question um, uh, from Laura. How to raise your hand on an iPad. Do, do you know how to do that, Sonia? 
I can Google it. Okay, we'll go, we'll get back to you, Laura, in chat. <laughs> <laughs> so, without further ado, Rita, welcome. Thank you, thank you, Madam President. And I just want to say it's so nice to see. I can't see you all at the same time because now I think there are three screens. So hopefully, if something comes up, um, oh, I can see myself now. That's so cool. Okay. I do want to start off with something I just heard Lynn Youngstrom say, that she found a book and it was titled Spotlight on You and it's on the recording secretary. Uh, yesterday when I started thinking, barely yesterday about how I was going to intro you into this, I wanted to say to you, if you have been a recording secretary, then you already know this, but if you're brand new, hot off the press, you just found out you're, you know, you won the election and you're going to be the recording secretary. I would just tell you to try to fly under the radar. But at the same time that you're flying under the radar, you want to be the radar because you need to know so much about your club level at, at this point. If you're a club level recording secretary, one of the first things that's gonna happen or happen with you is you're gonna need to have a letter composed and it should have, I, I can hold this up to the screen, it should have something here with um, officers' names, um, the title. So you wanna make sure that you find out right away from your club if they have stationery. Does, does our club provide stationery? Um, if the club doesn't provide stationery, you're going to need something in stationery form for the bank. And the bank is going to be calling upon the recording secretary, the treasurer, and the president of the club to say that the documents you are presenting are real and true so that they can do the change of names at the bank. But when I first found this out at club level, I was I was like, really, wow, okay, I've got to let that recording secretary know that she needs to have certain, certain papers in order. One of the first things that you're going to find at club level is that when they put you in front and, and, and please, let me just, let me just say this, make sure you sit in the front. You should be seated next to your parliamentarian or the club parliamentarian, but I have gone to many, many clubs um, throughout San Gabriel Valley District and the recording secretaries tell the president they want to sit out. I want to sit out there with, with my friends. That's not where you belong. You belong. You've earned it. You, you've won the election. You belong up in front. Now, up in front is because this is where you're going to be given um, possibly the reports. You should be getting the chairman reports. You should get, be getting everything that the president's getting, you're getting. Um, you want to make sure that when you hear a speaker coming, here, this, this one is mind-boggling, uh, you're going to have a guest speaker, you should have the president's agenda already in front of you. And usually what I do is I get the agenda and then I put it up, copy and paste it onto you know, my, my Microsoft Word, and then I open it up and I give myself giant margins, giant spaces so that as the meeting goes on, this is where I'm putting those key, key points or key notes that I need to have. It isn't what they say, it's the action that is taken. You all know that if you've been a recording secretary, if you haven't been, you're not writing everything I'm saying right now. You're only gonna write things that, that if I make an action, if I do something that is gonna be um, important to record at, at the club level. One of those things is called a motion. And you need to be on your P's and Q's if you're going to begin as a recording secretary. I, you know, if you got there and you're taking minutes and someone says, um, Madam President, I move something and you're just kind of looking around like, what does that mean? You need to know who's speaking. On virtual, it's, it's, it's become hard, it's difficult, not hard because my head is down and somebody says I'm uh, in the voice. You may not you know, recognize the voice. There's so many of you. So you have to say, you know, I, Rita Aleman, move that this, 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 and then you give whatever motion it is you're giving. That's if you're on video. But if you're in person, usually the clubs have a, um, you have your motion form. 
And the motion form, if it's ready for you, if you have a few of them there, you could let train your members, train them early. Tell them, I'm going to need a motion form because without a motion form, you could type it wrong into the minutes. And if it is in the minutes and it's typed wrong and nobody picks it up and somebody needs to reference back to it in two or three years and you typed it wrong, that's the way it is. <laughs> you could change it. I mean, minutes can always be corrected at any time, but if, if somebody pulls it out of three years ago, it, there it is, okay? So you wanna make sure that if your club doesn't have motion forms, start motion forms. There's nothing wrong with saying, I, it, it's the tools of the trade. You're gonna need them, so why not ask for them? The same way with the stationary. The same way that I was gonna say, when there's a speaker, and you've already received the agenda from the, the night before, two nights before, the speaker's name should be, it would be on the agenda. If the speaker's name is not on the agenda, and, and please don't get me wrong when I say this, but I have heard recording secretaries look up and say, what is your name? What is your name? How do you spell it? And let me tell you, it, there's nothing more embarrassing than knowing you're the speaker and somebody's calling out to you. They don't know your name. They don't know how to spell it. And they're using your speaking time to do that. That's not when you do it. If you if you're, want to be a good recording secretary, do the work before. Do the work the day before. You can contact your president. You can ask your president to, um, can, you know, you put the name of this person. Is that the real way they spell it? Is that correct? Get the name of the spelling. If the person, if the speaker hasn't been identified, when they show up, you pretty much know there's a hustle and bustle going on about a person. Get their business card. They, they usually have it. They usually send it. They have pamphlets that they send out. There's things that they do. But whatever you do, try your hardest not to fly over the radar. Stay under the radar. There's no reason for you to point out to everybody that you don't know how to spell the name. Get a list of your members. This is one of the fun things in the club because you're going to get to know your members right away. You're going to know, you know, who asks questions, who doesn't. Um, you're going to get to know their names. Um, I think it's 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 the most fun, and you will become popular <laughs> because they're going to know you. Um, let's see. I went over motions and your speakers and your list of names. One thing, one question that I'm always asked, even now that I'm the um, state recording secretary, is do I need to write on my minutes the who second the motion? No, you, you need to write who made the motion, then the motion, and you can put motion seconded and um, passed, motion second and approved. You figure out how you're gonna present that. But you do not need and you should not need to be putting the second person's, the person who seconded name. Okay, according to Robert's rules, we don't need to be putting that name. So again, that's another one of those places where somebody in a meeting doesn't need to go, who seconded it? Who just seconded it? You got the second. You don't need to go back over it again. Um, one of the other questions that I'm asked is when the chairman speak, how much of the chairman's report do I need to put into the minutes? Okay, you need, you can highlight, you can highlight what they do. Let me show you an example of that if I have it here, I should. Here's one, okay. So I'm gonna try, don't, don't copy and print. <laughs> but this was a report by one of our officers. So what I do as the officer speaks, I highlight in bold and put little ticket things and, and underline. I follow along with what they're reading. They please, if your chairman give you a report and they go off script, go up to them afterwards and say, you know, um, you didn't read this. So can you just tell me key things that you want maybe in, noted or something here because this is what you said but normally they should stick to their their paper to what they've just turned in and you can then just put highlights you can bold them you can um bullet them 
and put chairman so-and-so spoke and then a bullet, bullet, bullet. And, and you're just putting an action. Um, there are many action words within the vocabulary. Um, action words are something like, um, it was reported. That's an action, a report. It was reported. Um, maybe this summer I can go over some action words. It was recommended. It, she went over, she gave us examples, she explained, you know, you can give action words there. Um, you don't want to go into great detail because that's what it's, it's not about. It's about what actually happened at the meeting. Another one of the um, key things that came up to me was how we are presenting the minutes. So when the minutes are presented at a meeting, um, this is where usually the recording secretary, sometimes I hear between recording secretary and president, sometimes not, not us, Pam, but between them, they, they usually fumble a lot. They fumble quite a bit over the verbiage, over, okay, do I say it? Do you say it? Who says it? What do we do? How do you do it? Get together with your president and script it. It's not hard, ladies. It just get together with your president. It's another way for her to get to know you and you her. Um, and if you're a man, then him. Uh, but find out when I make, when I present the minutes, are you, you're gonna say, you're gonna call upon me, I'll get up, I'll say the minutes. If the minutes were distributed throughout the, the meeting via email, then you don't need to print them. You could have printed copies available if now that our meetings are coming back, you should have enough copies for everybody when they come to the meeting. So you want to find out from the past how many people normally show up. How do we get our minutes printed? Do we go to a printer? Do I print them? Um, who reimburses me? That's that's paper and ink. So you want to think about that. But ask, how have we done this before? Now, if you already know how they did it before and you didn't like the way they were doing it before and you want to do it a new way, tell your president. It, it doesn't hurt to let her know, I'm going to try to do something different here because in the past, I put out the minutes on the table. At the end of the meeting, the minutes are still sitting there. That happens too. So, and I'm collecting papers and papers of minutes. Well, that's not your problem. The problem, you and it's not even a problem, your job is to get the minutes into the hands of the club members, okay? So don't worry, don't sweat the small stuff. Look at the minutes are all over the two. Not a problem because you got those minutes into their hands and that's what your job is to make sure that your, your club members have the minutes. Let's talk district level just for a moment because some of you are at district level and you might be seeing things that, that you don't think are correct there's, it's real hard to get sometimes um, a recording secretary to correct herself. Sometimes, I, I don't know what it is, it didn't happen to me, but if you're at district level, you might be thinking, well, I'm, I'm untouchable up here, but you're not. If you're gonna be a district recording secretary, you carry a very important position here because your minutes should be bound at the end of the at the end of the year. You should have those minutes put somewhere. It should say in your bylaws. This is the most important thing. Check your bylaws as to what you are are responsible for at the end of the fiscal year. At the end of the year, what do I do? What do I do with all these minutes? They need to be preserved. <laughs> and if you don't know where the other minutes are from the year before, ask ask somebody. Don't just go off into the parking lot and say, I don't know what they did with their minutes before. You ask and find out. Make yourself, at that point, the radar. So um, going into chairman reports at district level is a whole ball game different than club reports at district level. I mean, at club level. Because district reports, again, should come, I mean, it's, it's just, you're going to make it easier for those who are the recording secretary The the president should be letting everybody know if you're going to make a report, give us three copies. One for the president, one for the recording secretary in, in this case, and then the dean who would be the chairman of the chairman, the dean of chairman. So 
you can say four copies. I don't care what whatever your bylaws say, or if they don't say, you can tell the recording, uh, you can tell the chairman, the recording secretary needs a copy of that. I know President Pam, she's always telling you guys, that, you know, this has to get to the recording secretary. She does that, not, not to say Rita doesn't know, but to say, maybe you people have forgotten. You've got to get it to the, the person who's uh, flying under the radar. <laughs> you don't see us here. So at, at district level, now they've given you the three, you've been distributed the three copies. I'd ask a question, but maybe one of you can ask, a, what do you do with those copies? What do you do with all those copies? Now, I have seen some recording secretaries just do nothing with them. They're, when you get the minutes, you're not getting those copies of the chairman reports. And then I have seen some of the chairman, I mean, some of the recording secretaries copy the entire report, copy and paste it and put it into the minutes. You just saw a report and now you're putting it in the minutes, the whole report. And that that's 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 a no-no. You don't you don't want to do that. So you, again, remember you want to bulletize, you don't want to put please don't put the whole report in there. It, it, you know, I said, she said, she said, I said, it, it doesn't go in the minutes. Um, I think with that, I know there's going to be other questions, Madam President, so maybe I can open it up to an open forum here. Excellent. Excellent. And um, yes, I love that you, you brought up the bylaws because that's the first place as you all get your questions in, in order here, um, that's the first place you're gonna look for your job description. With that said, we have the state parliamentarian here and I'm sure she would agree that you don't wanna bog down your bylaws with a bunch of job descriptions. And so it's gonna be very brief. And you heard Rita say that you wanna ask your predecessor, what did they do? And there's a lot of things that we can find out by talking to the people who had the job before us. Um, I think it's okay too to tape a meeting. I know when Ann Scalbo was the recording secretary for Toby Cahan's administration, I sat next to her and she had a little tape recorder. I happened to have the same kind of digital tape recorder that I used in theater. And so I would always make sure it was turned on. And Toby made sure when she brought the meeting to order that she announced that the recording secretary was taping the meeting. And that's so she can go back and get the exact wording. That is absolutely okay too. Um, your quick bite yesterday, if you get quick bites, if you don't go onto the site, we'll talk about that at the end, pull it up. We, re we asked a lot of the past recording secretaries from state to answer questions about acronyms and other things and four of them put together a really, really wonderful document. And so that is there for you to take a look at as well. And um, something that I think that a lot of people don't re really realize is the minutes are a legal document. If you are to go to court, you know, heaven forbid that should happen. Your minutes, if approved already, can be brought in as evidence. That is very, very important. Your reports can as well, the reports that you write. However, this is about the minutes today. So those are the two things you have as a club that will help you with proof of ownership, which is usually where I've heard it happening, is it's in the minutes from last year, yet somebody else is saying they own it this year. The minutes have it in last year, so that's proof of ownership. Um, the other item before, you know, I see some hands up, I want you to think about is I have asked the communications team and the district presidents and the district deans to start looking at hybrid ways to fill these positions. I come from an era of, you took the minutes longhand on a yellow lined piece, pad of paper and pencil or pen, I like ink pencil I just happened to get all over me. That is still okay. But that 
lined pad has to get to an electronic version because that's what we're putting on the table now. So you don't want to have your club or your district turn around and say, only if you know how to use a computer can you be a recording secretary because we don't have a lot of people. We're still half and half with that. That's 50% of our membership. But we may have somebody who's very good at shorthand. I have seen secretaries take minutes in shorthand and then transcribe it later. And then somebody else picks it up and puts it into the computer. So think about different ways that you can involve all of the levels of your, your talent in your club. So Sonia, I see that we've answered the question for raising your hand. If you wanna start calling questions for Rita. Thank you. So um, we, our first question or comment is from Debbie. Debbie, you have a question or comment? I just have a comment, and that is, I want to make sure that everyone um, understands something. Uh, Rita had said that uh, you do not need to record the name of the person who seconded a motion. If you are involved in any pu governmental public meetings, like Board of Supervisors, City Council, City Committees, um, Neighborhood Councils, any of that kind of stuff, they're governed by the Brown Act, which yes. those rules are slightly different than what we do, and they require the name of the person who has seconded the motion. They also require that when you take a vote, that you take a vote in the yeses, the noes, and the people who have abstained, and those also have to be recorded in the minutes, but that's not what we do. But if you're involved in public entities, I just wanted you to know that that's a difference between what we've done. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie. Excellent. The point. next person is Ellen's iPad. Ellen. Yes, I'm not sure if this is the um, where I should be asking this, but when you were talking about motions, the one thing that has confused me more than anything is what is the difference between a motion and a recommendation? Well, a motion that comes to the executive board has already, um, well, it, it comes to the executive board as a motion. You're, you're moving that you want to um, pay the officers more money. That's a motion. When it's coming from a, a rec board recommendation is usually coming from an executive committee level. That's what I'm thinking. That's where I've seen it. Um, perhaps someone may be better versed at this, but usually I get it from the executive committee when they make a motion at executive committee, they need, and it passes or it, no, if it doesn't pass, don't worry about it. But if it passes, it needs then to move to the executive board. So at your next, you had your executive committee where your officers were. Now you're going to move to your executive board where all your members are. And then it comes as a board recommendation because it's coming, it's already been first it's already been voted on. So when it comes to the executive board, it doesn't need a second because it's already a motion. It's a motion that's coming in. That's so if, if chairman has a, um, say a new idea that they want to pursue as a fundraiser, whatever, they can make a motion to the board, then the board takes it to the general commit, the general um, attendance the you're we're, talk, we're talking the same thing but different wording when you have your officers your president your vice president all your officers that's an executive committee that's executive committee when it goes to the executive board the way i understand it is the executive board is spelled out as your officers and your members so all your members your chairman everybody is on the executive board so when you make the executive committee has the recommendation then it moves and it's passed and it moves over as a board recommendation executive committee coming in okay thank you yes yeah, so in some of those districts if i can just say because i'm in the marina district we have an executive board which are the officers oh it's different from the state it's just a different word that's all and we have a district council which is the entire group so you want to look at your bylaws and see exactly what you're calling these these groups, um, because it does get to be just a little word here and there. But Rita explained it perfectly. Yes. And if that's the I know a lot of clubs are required a chairman to go to the elected group first before it's brought to the club level. 
for everyone to vote on it, which is fine. That's how they do business. And so, yeah, we just have to, it doesn't require a second, like she said, it's just up for discussion. Right. And one then thing, the vote. One more thing, Madam President. When um, she had mentioned, I didn't see her name, where are you, Ellen? When um, a chairman, and we, this, I brought this up to President Pam, um, a chairman at our executive board meeting can get up and she can, and, and a good example, let's say Cup of Joe project that we did last year. She began her chairmanship talk, her report by explaining Cup of Joe and what it does and what it did. At the very end of her, her line in her sentence, she said, therefore, Madam President, I move that the CFWC accept the Cup of Joe project we didn't have that at executive committee. That only got presented at executive board. And that's the difference when you are doing a report, a chairman report, you would put all that is, that, that um, substantial, uh, what's the word, that backs up that motion is the wording you wanna put into your report. So when I said, don't put everything they say, that's the only time that I know that it can be superseded and you do need to have that backup wording just before the motion, okay, if that helps. So motions can be made still at, at the board level, doesn't have to be always executive. All right, thank you very much for that question. We're gonna move on to Bates iPhone, Bates iPhone. Okay, so she was talking about getting the reports from the chairs, the corresponding secretary receives reports from chairs, but they do not, the entire report doesn't get added to the corresponding secretary's report. So A, I wanna clarify that and B, are you supposed to paraphrase what the chair is saying to put into the report, the corresponding secretary's report okay i'm, I'm um what is your name i don't see your name linda linda okay hi linda um i'm talking about recording secretary not corresponding secretary they're they're oh okay, they're, okay sorry recording so secretary. the recording secretary and she should be you know you can ask this is something that like i said talk to your president i've noticed they don't give the recording secretary of the report could I get a copy of reports? It's it's just a simple thing. And it means then that when they get to the microphone, they're prepared. So they will give you their copy. And then yes, you paraphrase actions that were done. So yes, you do not- You don't add the entire report to the recording secretary's no. report. You paraphrase what bullet happened. It. Yeah, you can bullet it if it was a, um, as long as it was an action. She explained, that's why I said I, I should do something where there's just all these words that are action words, because as long as you put it was an action. She explained, she okay. went over, she, you know, reiterated, whatever. <laughs> okay. All Thank right. you, Linda. Now, We're going to move forward. Um, Diana, Diana, you had a question or a comment? Hi. Yes, I did. Okay, my question is, um, I printed out the the uh, PDFs that were sent last night, and um, I noticed on this one, you know, the recording secretary's one, um, under recording secretary, there's like little bullet points, and except they're cute little butterflies, I think. Yeah. It says executive, this one really stood out for me, executive committee meetings are confidential. Right. Now, we had past presidents in our club that have said, no, they are not confidential. And we've had actually problems with committee members running off and telling their friends what's going on. So is it really true that committee meetings are confidential like what happens at the meeting stays at the meeting kind of thing yeah i would refer this one to our state parliamentarian to valerie barnes is okay she is she still here 
Valerie's yes, yes. here. Valerie, can you answer this for Diana, please? Because this is really important. <laughs> it's a great question. It is. I know what I know, but I know what I, I know. I want to hear it. Okay. I'm under the radar. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm having a computer problems. We see. But you. as far as a board meeting is confidential. The committee. I, I, when the when the president and her committee, you the know, the executive committee, right? That's a confidential meeting. What's what action there stays there? Thank you very much. That now, with that said, said, I want to tell you, I have been in a club. I was the president of the Redondo Beach Club. In our bylaws. The executive committee meeting is open to any member to attend. They are not closed meetings. However, they are confidential meetings, which were two different things. And yes. it, was a, it was a rough thing to, to get across to people because they were there for, I'm just gonna say unknown reasons, probably what you were talking about to share with friends later. And we made it very clear <laughs> and, and any of the people that have been in a board or on a board where something has gotten out can tell you it's a very big violation. We feel violated when that happens mm -hmm. because we need to trust yes. our board. It doesn't matter that you only got to appoint a few people. You are all elected to do a job. You are a team. You are a dynamic. And you need to trust that di that dynamic is going to keep Confidence. Valerie. Yes, I'm sorry. I didn't raise. I didn't raise my hand. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Um, I appreciate all that information. I needed to hear that one also. Uh, thank you, Diana, for that question. That very good question. Thank you. I'm going to lower your hand. Um, Lynn, are there questions in the chat? Yes, there is. And this happens to be from Diana that just spoke. She wants to know if minutes are emailed to members several days before the general meeting, is it necessary to make copies for the members to have at the meeting? My, my response would be it is necessary. I think it is necessary to have minutes available if you emailed them as Pam, President Pam explained earlier, not everybody's, um, some people don't check their emails for a week. So if you did it three days before, um, don't expect them to have them. Uh, but it is your job. I mean, it's part of your position to make sure that the minutes are in the hands of all the members. And the only way you're going to ensure that is if that woman woke up that morning and came to a meeting and then says, I don't have the minutes you need to get them in her hand. So you would say, you know what? I, I made some extra copies just in case this would happen. It makes you look good. It makes the club look good and you're fulfilling your position. Thank you. And uh, we, it looks like we have one more comment in chat. Uh, yes, um, Kathy Hollins wants to know clarification. So board meeting minutes are not to be distributed to the general membership. Um, on that answer, again, look at your bylaws and see what defines board meeting and what defines executive committee. Some people put executive board. You need to look at your bylaws and see if it's if your board is called a board meeting. And to me, the board is everyone. Then then no, you, you've got to get it to your board. But the the privacy part comes when you're the executive board or executive committee but look at your bylaws for definition on how you define those words i i know president pam said they're called different things in her district so. yeah my district they're called something completely right. different so, and that but that's true you don't at the state level let me speak about the state level right now we have the executive committee we have the finance committee these are executive branch committees we have the membership team and we have the executive, like I said, committee. You don't see the minutes from those three things. But when we get together with every chairman, every district president, every district dean, 
all of the elected officials, that is our executive board. It consists of about 110 people. Those minutes are open to all 10,000 of you. We make sure that they get out for everybody because it is really important. And some of you may have heard me say this because I do it over and over again. Your minutes that are for everyone are not a secret. It, you, you heard Rita say she gets them on the table. She makes sure they're there for people. I think it's important with an, I'm gonna be slammed here for some people, but my eyes are not good either at age 63, but some of us that are aging don't have great sight. So putting the minutes on a piece of paper at the top of the area, the dais on, a, on an A-frame that everyone can go and look at, I do not like that. I like the minutes to be read out loud. I like them to be distributed. I want to hear people be able to discuss them because your minutes are your business. And your club needs to know everything that the club is doing. Even if it's a small group of people that are paying bills or making decisions, that needs to be okay by all of you. And the only way you're gonna find out about that is with the minutes. You need to make sure you read those minutes. Thank you. Um, Valerie, did you have a comment on that? You were waving your hand. No, you're good. Okay, great, fantastic. Back to you, Pam. So, you know, if you think of something for Rita, we've got plenty of time, but we're gonna move on to corresponding secretary. I'm gonna start um, with a little story. When I was president of the Redondo Beach Club, now we're talking about 2001, I became president of the Redondo Beach Club, not because I ran, but because I was the program officer and the president passed away. And the first vice president was um, going into uh, chemotherapy and I was the second vice president. We thought programs were more important than membership at that time. And so that's what we did. We didn't even know about Federation or California or anything. And that or district, I will be the first one to admit it. And so I had a crash course in being a president. This was after I was a secretary. And when I became secretary, I was fairly new in the club. I did not know anybody in the club. We did not have name tags. So I pitched the idea that we get name tags. I made them in the little clear things. And I stood at the opening of the clubhouse where people signed in. I, at every meeting, I would introduce myself and give them their name tag. And at the end, I would collect the name tags. And that's how I learned the names of everyone in my club so that I didn't have to miss lunch because I'm taking minutes and I'm writing things down like women, woman in red scarf makes this motion. And I have to run around and find out what her name is. This is how I learned how to do it. So you have to be very creative as a secretary to figure out how to do this. One of the biggest arguments I had as a president take place, and it was an argument, we know the difference between debate and argument, was about the corresponding secretary. One of the officers was requesting, not requesting, kind of demanding that the corresponding secretary be electronic and that all correspondence went out electronically. Well, I like a thank you card. I think everybody does. They still like the written card. And that's kind of what the, the corresponding secretary, you're gonna hear from Tony, a past corresponding secretary is doing. They are taking care of our correspondence. So I don't see anything wrong with having someone who is not as electronic savvy, who does write very legibly and nice, getting a lot of stationery and being a corresponding secretary. It's an important job. And we need to make sure that those people know those parameters as well. They are sometimes defined in your bylaws, in the club bylaws at that time. Anybody who had missed three meetings got a note from the corresponding secretary in that club. And that was lovely because that's a nice thing to have. The corresponding secretary was also tasked with writing a poem for Christmas or Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, the holidays. 
and sending it out to everyone in the club. And we had about 72 members at that time. So that was a lot of correspondence for them. But it was really nice. And I think that it's important to realize that we can embrace all sorts of talents with that. So Tony Lima is a past corresponding secretary for CFWC. She is from the Shasta district. I've known her for quite a while as well. And uh, she is currently serving as the CFWC co-publications chair. So they are looking at six to eight different booklets that we have and trying to make them ungender specific and more, more open for everybody, more free to um, bring everything updated into a virtual platform and update electronics into that. Uh, Tony served under Dory Kelsey's chairmanship and um, she's it's really hot where she is right now. She <laughs> said 110 this week. So Tony, I hope that you are in front of that quilt and enjoying some air conditioning. Take it away. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Um, good, old, good morning, everybody. <laughs> I'm happy to see everybody again. Um, now, you should have received the, the pages that we've been talking about that um, has the duties of the corresponding secretary. And I wanted to touch on the items that were on some of there and also expand on it. Now I'm gonna be speaking more about the, my experience as a corresponding secretary for the state. Some clubs and districts, I know my district had consolidated corresponding secretary and recording secretary into one duty. So, um, and that's okay. The name corresponding secretary really implies a, a girl Friday type of a thing where, you know, like Pam was saying, writing the handwriting, the letters and sending those out. But um, communication has really changed over the years and it's still a essential part of the corresponding secretary's duties, but the way we do it has really changed. The first thing I would suggest to be done after being elected would be to establish a database for communicating and make sure that when you send out your emails that the people can reply to you. Every one of us has had that mysterious email go out and it goes into cyberspace never to be seen again. So we need to be careful when we're using electronics. Um, at the beginning of the new term at, at, for the state, I gathered um, the rosters sent out and once received the database is made and I usually separate it by officers, first vice presidents, district presidents, and um, chairman. The reason I use the smaller list is because if you do a real large list and it's mailed out, sometimes if your settings on the computer are set a little higher, it dumps into the spam. And again, it could be missed. The other thing you want to be careful with is don't just rely on the email. As uh, mentioned before, you have to make a list of those who don't have the email. And if they don't, then you want to mail those out through the USPS. Um, it takes a lot of time, especially when you're doing the, the state, but it's worth it because you're sending out calls, you're sending out the yearbooks and a lot of other information to the whole state. So, and then if something bounces back, you have to research it and find out why the email didn't work. Sometimes like with the convention call, it's 
sent to the entire state, not only the presidents, the officers, the chairman, and all, all the district people, but that goes straight to the clubs as well. In that case, it's separated by districts, and I do one district at a time following the same procedure. Now at the CFWC meetings, the corresponding secretary reads the list of all of the absentees to the meeting and the correspondence that's been received. She then gives a report on what work and activities she's done since the last meeting. The other item that the secretary, the corresponding secretary does is the calls. And this is one that I really enjoy doing. I, I really have a lot of fun with those because the agendas are given to, to you, supplied by the president, the, all the board, you know, all the rooms and everything, locations are given to you by the meeting planner. And in the, the convention call, you have the resolutions and the bylaw changes. Those are also included, but those are supplied by the parliamentarian and the resolutions chair. So what you get to do is the fun stuff. You get to organize it. <laughs> you get to find the pictures and all the, the um, visuals. And um, as Rita said, each, in each call, there will be a notice of who is going to report at those meetings. And you're asked to bring three copies of the reports and they're given to the, the corresponding secretary and she separates them to give them to the proper officers. And um, the recording secretary absolutely needs a complete set. Okay. Okay, so the, the convention, I've lost my place. Okay, so the convention call is a little different for the state. It also has a program book that has the final agenda, it has all of the ads that have been purchased by the clubs, the districts, and sometimes uh, members. That's in there along with all of the information on your speakers and a lot of other information. Okay. And another uh, one thing to note is that last at our last convention in Maine, it was voted to allow the convention call to be sent electronically. That will save us a lot of money and a lot of time. But it's also important to make sure that everyone gets it. So um the annual convention has two other publications. I've already discussed the program book and the second one that is needed during the election convention are the campaign packets. After obtaining a one page biography with each candidate's qualifications, along with a picture of each, the book's assembled and is organized in order of office and printed for distribution at the, the meeting. And by far the largest project of 
the state corresponding secretary is the yearbook. Now, I don't know how the, the clubs or the districts do it. Our district has the um, communications chairman do their yearbook, but this is something that is fun to do. It's really exciting and a bit challenging during the first year of the new term because everything changes. So you get to find all sorts of new pictures and artwork and you get to make it new and different. The state yearbook contains six sections. And this is really like a, you should make this your Bible. <laughs> it is so chock full of information that um, it's the, the first place I go to look for anything. The first section is the administration section. It has a listing of all officers, district presidents, and first vice presidents along with their picture. And that's really helpful when you're at a meeting and you want to find somebody, you've got that picture to find them. <laughs> I've used that before. It has a calendar of events, the Collect for Club Women, some GFWC and Western States contact information, a short history of CFWC, pictures of all the past presidents from 1900 till today, and descriptions of GFWC and CFWC emblems and more. Next section is the club and district information. This is an address book and it contains all the information for the clubs and the districts, including the membership size, organization and federation dates. And it also contains the district information, all of the district officers, all of the chairmen that they have and other information there the district information is supplied to the corresponding secretary by the district president and the club contact information comes from the information forms that were submitted with your dues. And this is why we've been asking for you to please use your legal name. Um, that way we can get it right in the book. I know there are, and my club included, sometimes we use three different names plus the, the abbreviations. So it makes it hard. The next section is the chairman's program manual. These pages contain information from each of our CFWC officers and our community service and advancement program chairs. These pages include any special or focused projects and associate organizations that can be supported. There are instructions on annual contests, reporting, as well as membership programs. And this section is really a how-to type of a section. And then the next one is the bylaws. It all, the yearbook always contains the current bylaws, and I would suggest to, if you're not um, putting your bylaws in your club and district yearbooks that you consider doing that. Because it's so hard when you have a question and you're fumbling through who has a, a copy of the bylaws, hopefully the parliamentarian, but. <laughs> okay, this is another section that has a wealth of information. And if you have questions about CFWC, that's your go-to. This is the first place I go to find it. And lastly, there's two indexes. The first year I, I did this book, it's like 230 pages long. I thought, what have I gotten myself into? The amount of information can be a bit daunting, but the trick is like with any project, take it a piece at a time. Um, yes, have a vision for the whole, but just say, I'm going to do X amount of pages today, or I need to get this done today. And pretty soon you're done. It's like eating an elephant. You do it one bite at a time. The yearbook is always an ongoing project. 
the files updated as new information is received and is distributed early yearly at the September board meeting. And I'm so excited that we get to do it in person this year. <laughs> so happy. Uh, one last item on the on the duties page you received. Under the corresponding secretary, it says that, that yes, you do the yearbook, but it also says that you do other publications at, if directed by the president. So depending on what's happening in the world or at CFWC and what's needed at the time, you may be asked to do something that's not a normal thing. But if it weren't important, you wouldn't have been asked to do it. So be open. And um, as in all things, be positive and flexible. And um, I believe that's about all I have. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Um, the job of corresponding secretary while we get ready for your questions, because I know I see one from Laura here and um, we'll get that up. For clubs and districts is going to be a little different. Um, I do think that the yearbook sometimes falls under a specific position, but it sometimes falls under the corresponding secretary again, that is at the bylaws or the president's discretion. Um, the, the correspondence, it's important, I think, to have it read out loud, whether it's at the district, the state, or the club level. We get thank you cards all the time. And it's important for the members as a corresponding secretary to have them get up and read that correspondence so that you know that your money has gone somewhere. And um, these letters are usually written from the heart. I know I get them for the state and uh, because we do a lot for the state and I send them on to the corresponding secretary after I have read them, Gina Radocchio, to read at our meetings so that people get to share with them. I think that's something else that at all three levels needs to happen. Um, she talked about email. Emails become extremely important. As you've heard Rita talk about it, you've heard Tony talk about it, you've heard me talk about it, but you've also heard all three of us say that we're going to make it available to our people that don't get email as well. And that is really important, I think, at the club and the district level, especially. We need to make inclusive all members to all correspondents. Otherwise, we aren't doing our jobs the way that we should be because there are no secrets. There cannot be any secrets at uh, all. Um, the, the yearbook, you've heard Tony say about the yearbook. She is working on the yearbook this year as well. That was my question to her. The corresponding secretary that I wanted to bring in, did not want to um, have the responsibility of the yearbook. And so I asked if Tony and Chris as co-chairs would help with the yearbook and they said, yes. So I want you to know that it's okay at all levels of federation to ask and see if somebody else might be willing to do that. And if you have somebody who's very good on the computer and they don't wanna do an office position, maybe the yearbook is the great place to start because your yearbooks are so important. And I want you to make sure you heard her talk about bylaws as the last section of the state yearbook. Your bylaws need to be in your club yearbooks. They need to be in your district yearbooks and they need to be in the state yearbook as well because we've had it where they weren't available one administration and it, it was a mistake we all learned we thought we were going to save money with printing and the only thing we did was give ourselves headaches and have to take more headache medicine we learned that the bylaws must be in the yearbook it was a great lesson learned and um, I can't talk enough about your bylaws it is so important for the secretaries and the recording secretaries to really look and see what do the bylaws say about my job? 
Okay, so Lynn Youngstrom has come to Pam and said, will you be secretary for, I'm in the Torrance Club now because that's where I live and I, re I retired from Redondo Beach. So I, let, I, I moved clubs to where my hometown is. So, because I was going to club on my lunch break for Redondo, I worked for Redondo. And even though they're about 11 miles from one another, I decided I wanted to be in my home club. So she comes to me and she says, we would like you to take on corresponding secretary for the Torrance Women's Club. So the first thing I'm going to do is say, I need a few, a few days to discuss this with A, my family, and B, take a look at what the job entails. Because I don't just want to say yes to a job I don't know what involves. Because my time is precious and my family time is precious. I'm going to go to the bylaws first and I'm going to read that. I'm going to call the person who has the job currently and I'm going to listen to them and I'm going to say, what else do they ask you to do that is not written down? So that I know that it is going to be assumed because it will be, let's not kid ourselves about it. If the last person did it, they're going to think you're going to do it too. It is going to be assumed that I will take on that responsibility as well. Then I'm going to talk to my family about it and see if they have any problems with the time involved because it means two meetings a month instead of one. The executive meeting, whatever that's called, and the club meeting, whatever that's called, at the club or the district level. And so you have to make sure you have that time involved. And so take your time with that decision. I would recommend that for any office. It's so important that we don't skip people straight up. You think up the ladder, I say down the ladder because I think president's on the bottom. Everybody stands on the president's shoulders to reach higher, to do a better job. But as you're on that ladder, your family has to get used to it as well. Otherwise, you have no support at home and that gets to be very stressful. The last thing I wanna say about um, a corresponding secretary is it is one of those jobs that is usually appointed. Not always, your bylaws may say something different, but if you are able to appoint a corresponding secretary at the club level or at the district level, or in my case, at the state level, you want to pick somebody you trust. It's so important to pick someone you trust. I'm gonna speak first person, Pam, as your state president. I was able to pick a parliamentarian and a corresponding secretary. I picked people who could do the job, that were very well trained, and that I trusted to be in that room with me and be my other ears because it's very hard to lead a meeting and hear absolutely word for word everything everyone's saying, especially when conversation happens. It's easier on Zoom, but we're getting ready to go back to open meetings. And you heard what Rita said, it gets really hard on Zoom for her. We do have motion forms. We do ask people to send them in. They don't always do that. And so now we slow everything down. We have you hold it up to the camera so that we can get it written down and things like that. So um, I, I really wanna make sure that you understand those things about the, um, the corresponding secretary. The last thing I'm gonna say before we open it up to the questions, and I know we have at least a couple. Um, Lynn and I, Lynn is my right hand for all of these workshops. She helps me, Lynn Youngstrom set them up, we come up with the subjects, we, we, we have ideas that we both work off one another, we work very well together. And I wanna thank her because this was not her job when she became a chairman, her job was color guard. <laughs> but I found out that these Zoom workshops were really a hit and I love that they're a hit. It's important that they are. It's an easy way for us to get in touch with you and we are going to keep doing that throughout my, my administration, this administration, I shouldn't say my administration, this administration, up through May 31st of 2022, we're gonna try and figure out how to bring Zoom and in-person to you from now on. But one of the things that we went back and forth on are financial secretaries. 
they are a secretary, correct? We have one at the state level. I know a lot of clubs have them. I know a lot of districts have them. But the two of us chose for them to go with the financial, financial uh, job back to the basics because that, it's not quite the same as what Rita and Tony are talking about. So let's open this up to questions. Sonia, take it away. All right, everyone. Do we have any questions in chat, Lynn? Uh, yes, we do. Um, Laura Stephenson wants to know what are the duties of corresponding secretary at the local club level? Tony? Yes. <laughs> well, it um, would depend on the club. The duties that were emailed out are for the, the state and it contains a lot of things for the state. So what I would do is firstly, I would check your bylaws and find out what your um, club has a description in their bylaw of what each um, officer should be doing and start from there. And um, that would be the, the best thing to do. Thank you, Tony. Pam? Oh, okay. Yeah, oh. I know that at some club levels, invitations are covered mm -hmm. but under correspondence. Uh, a lot of our clubs are celebrating anniversaries. I know mine is one of them. And we have a PR person who sends out the um, information to the newspapers and to the city cable station. But the corresponding <laughs> secretary is in charge of sending out information to elected officials and other people that we would like to become involved with any stuff we have going on at that level as well. And so that might be something else that a corresponding secretary at a club level might do, Laura. Thank you, Pam. We have a question with Ellen. Ellen, you have a question or a comment? Yeah, it's not on corresponding secretary. I'd like to go back to an issue where Everybody was claiming that executive committee minutes were confidential and private. I have a real problem with that because Robert's Rules of Order says only executive sessions where you're doing nominations for officers or doing a disciplinary action are those private, but general board minutes are available to all members. They're owned by all members. And that was addressed in the Quick Bites information that was sent out Monday. So executive session is different than executive committee meeting. Correct. Okay. Correct. Thank you. Yeah, and we all call it something different. I want you to really get that because yeah. it's so important that we call things the way they are for us. I don't want you to think because you're in the Torrance Club that you don't have an executive group of that because you do. I just We just don't know what they're called. And there's also district council, but they aren't the elected officers in Marina. The district council are all of the clubs and all of the members of the clubs. And from there, we have the elected group. And so there's we need to get those names. There is no rule that tells you that you are to change the names of your branches to fit the names of GF, WSR, or CF, which is General Federation of Women's Clubs, Western States Region, or the California Federation of Women's Clubs. That is up to your club to decide. We are a federation. That's what federation is. We have choice. We can stand alone, but together, that group of twigs is very powerful. You can't just break one off. And so we're part of that big group, but none of us are gonna tell you what to call your separate groups. So yeah, make sure that you've, you kind of look at your things, ladies, and look at that. Secretary is a fun job, both of them. I've never been a corresponding secretary, but I think it would be wonderful because 
I like writing letters and thank yous. And I like collecting stationery. I like to see it in the store and just pick it out and have fun with that. And corresponding with people. I mean, what better way to make a new friend? Thank you very much, Pam. Um, we have a question on the floor with Wendy. Wendy, you had a question or a comment? Sorry, thank you. I clicked the wrong screen. Um, just uh, as a side note, where you're talking, most, most clubs bylaws do have some language in there with respect to in my person my home club it's called the executive committee or the executive board and there is a proviso in there that says that the board members and that would include anybody that happened to step into the meeting uh not discuss information until such time as it as it is presented to the membership. So in other words, you know, a, a group or one or two people aren't going, oh boy, we're gonna have to get riled up for this one, you know. But uh, it, it there many times in your bylaws, you can look and see specific language that will, will tell you that, you know, just because you were at the meeting doesn't mean you can go share all of that. Um, and then when you come to the general meeting, it's up to all the members to discuss. Thank you. Thank you. And I see something in chat about the handouts, just to um, make sure that if you did not get the handouts, either uh, from yesterday that you are able to download. Uh, you need to contact reservations with an S, cfwc at gmail.com, and they will be resent to you by Lynn. That goes directly to Lynn Youngstrom, mm -hmm. and she can handle that. And if you wanna take a look at anything that anybody, um, it would be Jean Lash and Scalbo, Sherry Meyer and Joyce Opjordan, answered about a lot of the questions that we had about the minutes in yesterday's quick bites. If you don't get quick bites, go to cfwc.org, our webpage, and look for the tab that says quick bites and bring up yesterday's date because it has a great article there too. So I just saw that somebody had a question. They disappeared. Ah, there we go. Okay, Sonia. Uh, Debbie, you had a question? Um, actually, I don't have a question. I put my hand back up, um, Pam, because my hand was the one that went up and came back down. And I was just going to remind everybody that in yesterday's Quick Bites, there is a link that's not that will take you to those comments that Jean Lash and uh, the other ladies put in. So you had already said that, which is why I took my hand down. Thank you, Debbie. Okay, we're going to go to the next question. Um, is it Vina? Is that correct? I apologize if I didn't say that correctly. Yes, that's right. Uh, my question is about the again about the recording secretary's minutes. Um, since you mentioned that the executive committee meetings are confidential, now I'm wondering, should those minutes of those meetings be bound the way we bind the minutes of our general membership meetings? Okay, I'll answer that one. It would depend again on your club or, or your district. So ask your club and district, how have you protected those minutes in the past? What has happened to them? Uh, the only way you're going to find out is by asking. If they say in the past we keep a record and they're in a book, then that answers your question. No bound, they go in a book. But if they are to be bound, then it would be the recording secretary's responsibility to get them bound. And same in a club, um, you ask what happens, what becomes, same thing, what becomes of chairman reports, what becomes of motion slips, what becomes of, there's a lot of what becomes that you really can answer if you just delve in a little bit, you have summer. So take the summertime to question these things, look them up in Robert's rules, 
look them up in your bylaws. Just get into it and <laughs> find out. Everybody's different. And the reason they're different is because all clubs are different. I hope that helps, Vina. And, and Rita mentioned something, and so did um, Tony, I think is so important about talking to the president. Know what they are expecting as well, because then you're not going to be blindsided. As I know, the, after our very first Zoom meeting last July, I, I called Rita and I said, well, how did that go? I think we need to slow things down. And she said, oh, yeah. <laughs> So I was, I had to work with, not I had to, I wanted to work with her on how do we make it work with what we have, which is Zoom. How do I help her do her job better and she helps me do my job better? That's so important. So ask the president. Correct. And, it, and it's perfectly okay to ask at the meeting to slow down. I did not get the name. I did not get the motion. I did not whatever. You're the record keeper. If you're if you're letting them just go off and you're going, oh, I'll remember, I'll get it down later. You may not, even if it's recorded, if the recording could have turned off on you. Check, oh, that's one good thing. Check your recorder every now and then that it is on. Check the recorder. Because sometimes these recorders will go an hour and then they'll stop. And then you're gonna go, oh, what happened? So check your recorder. And uh, one last quick tip on recording your minutes. When you send them out, you can number number line them, line number them. And that I found has really helped with the state minutes because um, then when corrections come in, they can address the line, not so much, you know, go to where you were talking about what I, yeah, I'm, I'm lost because there could be six pages. So you, line number them and then at the end once they've been approved you can take the lines out yeah excellent suggestion thank you ellen had a question she took her hand down but she's still here i think ellen and um, she has one in the chat do you mind if i read it lynn or would you like to read that It says, I have an in-person meeting to attend, so she had to go. So I think she was oh, just okay. So she was saying goodbye. Bye. Have fun. And it, yes, Ventura County is very open right now. She's from TAD, so that's wonderful. Because some of us, like in Los Angeles, um, today is the day. And we'll find out what that actually means. Um, the last thing I would like to address, and I'm, I'm hoping to get Valerie to come in on this, is when we look at the minutes or the correspondence, what is the job of the people reviewing them specifically? Um, do we send an eight page document saying you should have said it this way or your punctuation is incorrect? The motion is too long. And how do we address those issues? When we are asked to look at the minutes for review and corrections. Valerie, can you please let us know from the parliamentarian's point of view, what is it a person is looking at? You know, I sometimes wonder, Pam, what we are looking at. <laughs> Remember some of the basics. This is history of your club. You're writing history every day. What are you looking at? You want to see accuracy. You don't need to challenge how somebody says something. You know, most of us come from different parts of this country and we all talk a little different. And, you know, we can't keep this up with an eight page correction. You know, you should have said it like this. Your motion should have included that. Well, you know, those are all a lot of great things, but that's not what happened. I 
feel very frustrated with the fact of these corrections coming like they are. You are writing the action, you're telling the history, you're setting it up. And I, like Pam, do know when we've appeared in court with somebody's documentation. Evidently, earlier today, I may have said something wrong because Joyce Upjordan, also you know, par a past parliamentarian, has been getting phone calls all morning on something that I may have said wrong. I believe I said that executive um, sessions are privileged. Open board meetings are open. I think what our first lesson is, we got to get the terminology straight. Mm -hmm. And that seems to be a problem all the way down the line is, you know, you call it this and the good old tomato, tomato thing. Yeah. And um, I think once we get that firm in our mind, the rest flows real. And please be kind to secretaries. They're really kind of nice. They work hard. And um, I think one of the best things that you saw today, if you're not talking to each other, we're in trouble. <laughs> Thank so you, we, Valerie. I apologize, Pam. We have several questions on the floor. We have a question or a comment from Wendy. Wendy, did you have a question or a comment? Thank you. Just really, <clears throat> I'm sorry, really briefly. Many times when there is a correction made to the minutes, it does not require that the minutes be rewritten and retyped. If, if you've ever looked back at, at any historical minutes of your club, you will note in those books with Martin. lovely handwriting that, that whatever is crossed out and in the margin is the correction. So it's there, it always stays there. I have seen many secretaries pull their hair out. Oh my gosh, I've got to retype all three pages. Okay. No, you only correct the wording or the dollar amount and, and do it in the margin. You can do it in a red pen or something of that nature, but you know, don't make extra work for yourselves. Thank you. Thank you, Wendy. Uh, Valerie, did you have a comment on that? No? Okay. All right, our next question or comment comes from Catherine. Catherine? Hi, uh, I just wanted uh, to get um, uh, maybe since I since we're so fortunate to be able to have this resource and and have the experience um, uh, of members, um, I just want to put it out there um, under correspondence. Um, I, I know for, for me, I have binders of the letters that we receive, thank yous, um, uh, and you know, I, I would keep like a, a binder with all of those things in there, but mixed in with that, there were um, things that, you know, from a food bank that said, thank you for your contribution of so many pounds of whatever, you know, and, and so how are those being kept? How are those being recorded? I'm sure when the corresponding secretary reads it, and then maybe that's some the minute, so then it's okay that that's, that they're, you know, because some things are like separate, but then somehow they need to be captured. And then the only other thing on that is that I know we mentioned um, about communications um, and correspondence and sending out like the the hard cop, like like a hard copy in snail mail. But we're also moving into the future where a lot of things are communicated by via text 
or DM. I've received some messages um, on my social media from GFWC, and then I want to relay that message of even if it's something, you know, from the GFWC membership says like, oh, I love what you did there. Good job. And I want to make sure I communicate that. So correspondence is now kind of getting beyond just like the physical and going into more like the, the digital age. So if you have any materials on that, that's something that I'd also be interested in. Thank you. Tony, do you want to chime in with some of that? Certainly. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, I think it would depend on, like you said, the, the thank yous are usually read and then they're placed in the minutes. So what you do with the original comes down to what the club is. A lot of places, I know my club makes um, scrapbooks. We have a, we're over 100 years old, 120. <laughs> so we have a lot of scrapbooks. But those, it, it's up to the individual club. As long as it's in your minutes that those were read, then that's the, the record I think that's needed to be kept for legally. And what's done with the others that is um, up to the club. Now the um, correspondence that comes through the email to you, if it's something important like that uh, thank you from GFWC, I would print it off and read it and then let them decide what's to be done with the, the hard copy. You know, I try not to just print up everything, but there are some things special that need to be read in the entirety. So and that's what I would suggest. And with texts and things, you can take a picture, at least on an iPhone, you can. You can capture your text and you can um, print that off your computer. And so if some of you are interested in how to do that, I'm sure Sonia Holtz will take that on in one of her Sunday afternoon uh, help desk things because it took me forever to figure out how to take a picture with um, my iPhone of what was actually on my screen. But it comes in very helpful because you never know. Because sometimes it doesn't always get to you in another form of writing that is known by all of us. So it, you wanna learn how to deal with those different things as you can. I know in some clubs, the correspondence gets put in a president's book and handed to the president at the end of their term because it's, it's recorded as whatever it was in the minutes and then it's part of the scrapbook that's given to the president. And so it's, it's really up to a lot of the different levels. Some clubs have clubhouses. California is blessed with clubhouses. There are states with one or two we have so many clubhouses in this state. Districts, however, we have 18 districts and not one district owns a clubhouse. So what do you do with everything as a corresponding secretary that, or a recording secretary as far as storage is concerned? That should be addressed in your bylaws as well because if it's going to somebody's garage, and I guarantee you that there are a lot of garages filled with district paperwork right now. You need to know A, who has it, and B, what happens if something happens to them. Because if that person, and I've been to meetings as your president, where I'm not gonna name the club, somebody said, all of the stuff is in their garage. Their daughter has taken care of them. They are in a care facility. They want it out now. Thank goodness the daughter let them know. <laughs> because sometimes, and I'm gonna talk about the first time I became president again in Redondo, the president passed away, remember? Well, with her things, their children threw away everything, including the safety deposit key and most of her records. It took us two years to get that safety deposit key 
back. Not from them. We had to go through all sorts of legal stuff with Bank of America to be able to get into the safety deposit box literally almost a full two years after. So make sure you know where the corresponding secretary of your club and the recording secretary of your club and the recording secretary and corresponding secretary of your district are putting those documents because a plastic tub is fine until you can't get to it. And sometimes people will say, I want to hear the minutes from the May 2017 meeting. And so Rita knows where to go. She's the state recording secretary. We have our minutes bound, bound. And I want you to think about that word, binding costs a fortune. And there's only a couple of places in the United States that actually do that. And so we've changed that to being bound as in, it could be a, not a three ring binder, it could be velo binded, it could be spiral binded. So think about what you can afford too before you just put the word bound in your minutes. That's so important. And, um, okay, that was, I guess the last thing on my list um, it, of, of just reminding you about because these jobs are fun. They are important, but there is a reason we picked secretaries first. And it's because I hear a lot, I get a lot of emails that the secretary quit. We couldn't get somebody to accept the position. We don't have anybody running. And I think it goes back to a lack of information about the position. It goes to the correction of the minutes. I think when the minutes are corrected, if your name is misspelled, you let the person know. Don't let 30 or 40 of your closest friends tell everybody your name is misspelled. Be responsible for yourself and yourself only. <laughs> She's going to get it. She doesn't need 40 emails saying you spelled Pam incorrectly. It's really really frustrating because you don't want to read anything past that. Read what you were part of. Read what you did. Unless you're one of those people, like I know I saw Amelia here, Amelia Nieves. She, um, she's one of our past leads, graduates uh, for California and going on. I asked her to be part of approving the minutes for the convention. So she did have to pay attention to the entire convention. But sometimes when I look at the, the minutes, I review the entire thing for Rita. But then I go back and I really pick apart, okay, what did I say? And did, and I look at my notes, did I get across everything? And did she represent that in a proper fashion? And yes, she did. Or no, I would like you to add this. This month might change, but I only deal with what I can personally talk about because I think that that's a big part of why we don't get people to take the position. It should be fun. They should be able to eat their lunch and not run around and try and find out the name of everyone and having a motion form, having stationary, which would be my job. The stationary was my job as the state president and somebody else did it for me. It was like a gift, a manna from heaven for me. I just looked at it and changed the name, the one person's name because she spelled it differently and thanked Barbara Chavez because she did it for me. And so we, we need to really keep that in mind when we're looking at secretaries. And, and hopefully we're gonna open up the wonderfulness of this position as opposed to the mystique of it because you can write Gina, you can write Rita, you can write Valerie, you can write any of us, myself, Tony, about all of this that's going on and make it work for your group. I see we have some more questions before we go. 
Yes, thank you. Um, Lynn was first. Was there a comment in the chat? Uh, yes, and this is from Sherry Meyer, who is a former recording secretary. Um, she's, and this is according to the CFWC bylaws committee. Regarding the minutes, two key words to remember are correcting and changing errors of grammar, spelling, the order in which things happened are to be corrected, but the recording secretary cannot, should not change anything, meaning that if it happened, it was reported. You cannot go back and write something different. You cannot change the facts of the meeting. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you, Sherry. That's wonderful. Um, and that goes that goes hand in hand with something that Rita and I came across at the very first time that we sent out, well, she sent out the minutes from an executive board meeting, which is the big group, whatever you call it, it would be your club or your entire district board. But the board meeting, someone was trying to correct the grammar of the motions. Well, we have motion forms. We cannot do that. We can't change the grammar on the motion form. We cannot summarize it. It's what was handed to us. It was what was presented, debated, and voted on. <laughs> Thank you on that, Pam. We have one more question or comment from Debbie. Debbie? Yes, hi, Pam. Pam, you had mentioned about uh, you know, reading the minutes and only correcting the things that you personally involved in. I wanna make that same plea for the, for the yearbooks. Um, as somebody who's done both a state, uh, a district yearbook and a club yearbook, um, not a recording secretary or a corresponding secretary, it's a job that you know I offered to do. But the point is that anytime you get a yearbook, whether it's from the club, the district or the state, please, please, please look yourself up Make sure the information about you is correct, because the most frustrating thing in the world for me is seven months later, somebody tells me that I've got the wrong number on their street address for their home address or the wrong phone number. And it's like, and in our case, my district and my club, if there are corrections to the yearbook, we publish them in the next newsletter so that people can make those corrections in their own books. But it amazes me the number of people who have incorrect information in the yearbooks because I typed it wrong. I am sorry, but they never look at their own name. Please look at your own name and make sure that the information about you is correct. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie. Very good point. I appreciate that because, boy, that happens a lot. And we appreciate you for stepping in. Um, Sandy, Sandy, you had a question or a comment? OK, I lost you. You took your hand um, down. You're on oh, mute, sorry. Sandy. Sorry. I did not receive any mailing that you're referring to yesterday or last night. And who? how do I, how do I receive that? Who do okay, I get in so touch with? Here's what I'm suggesting. It came out from um, the CFWC reservations. So you're going to contact them with the subject line requesting corresponding secretary uh, handouts. And she is excellent at everything and she will get those to you. So you just need to contact Lynn. And I put the email in the chat and Pam has said it and she's more than willing to say it again. Or Lynn, if you wanna say it out loud real quick. And sure. It's reservations cfwc at gmail.com but please remember she's getting hundreds of emails right now so subject lines are important so please put the subject line what you're requesting so that she can okay. identify and return it to you very quickly thank you, thank you very much after reservations yes. reservations thank you. yes all right and then lynn did you have a question or a comment well, since we sort of seem to be winding down, I have a little something I'd like to share. It's called Secret a Secretary's Plea. Help me to do my work well, to have the memory of an elephant, and by some miracle be able to do five things at once. Never let me lose patience, even when the president has me search the files for hours for data that is later discovered on her desk. Help me to understand and carry out all instructions without any explanation. And when the year end, 
please give me the foresight not to throw out records that will be asked for in a few days, even though I was told emphatically, destroys thee, they are cutter, cluttering up the place. Thank you, Lynn. That's so perfect. <laughs> so Pam, at this time, do, would you like me to have Lynn just go over? I get a lot of questions, Lynn, on if we can share the codes. Can we share the codes for the workshops? Sure, no problem. There is just one code for each workshop. And we do encourage the club presidents to send these out to their individual club members. So everybody has them and they can, and it can be their choice to attend. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Lynn, for everything that you do. I really appreciate how good you are at this job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pam. Okay, I just have two more points to make. I, first, I just wanna say thank you all for coming um, to help us get through the mystique of the secretaries. I think by now you've understood that perhaps something that will help you is to have a different email where all club information comes in or goes out of. Gmail is great for that. The Gmail accounts are free. You may wanna bring up something with your club. They should give you permission to do this, to create something like we have for reservations so that it doesn't go to your private email because that's, that's really hard to wake up and find out you have a hundred emails in there and only two of them are for your husband. One of them is for you, but the other 97 are for club. So think about separating those things out. Um, the, the other thing, I just wrote it down. Let's see. We talked a lot about today with the correct names, not a lot, but we, talk, we touched about the correct names for clubs and districts. This is so important. A, it's important for your IRS tax records. B, it's important for your minutes that you have as a secretary, the correct name of your club or district on the top of your minutes. There is a lot of confusion over what is your correct name. I want you to know that we will be addressing that with the district deans, the district presidents, and the district membership people on the 29th of this month. We are gonna be going over what the IRS says their name actually is because we will hand out awards at convention or send you a 50 year member award certificate. And all of a sudden we'll hear, you need to redo it because this isn't the name of our club. Well, that's what's in the yearbook. The yearbook, your yearbook, the district yearbook, any publication of a club or district name should be the correct name. That goes for any fundraising you do because you've, most of our clubs are a 501c3 on their own or under the umbrella, or a 501c4, and therefore able to do fundraising. Your people that are getting the fundraising letters saying, hey, we're tax deductible. They need the correct name of your organization. And so that's a really important um, thing to also make sure that you have if you are taking on this position. I hope that most of you will say yes to these jobs. And it is always, you've heard me say this many times, it is always okay to have boundaries. And I think a lot of us as volunteers, we take on a position as a volunteer and we get bombarded with a bunch of things that we are absolutely okay with. And then that one thing comes in, that's too much. And I know that's happened to some of the people that have spoken today. And it's okay to say, no, not my job, not my circus, not my monkeys. And so we have to make sure too, that we remember that there are boundaries. We're all volunteers and we do this out of the love of our heart. And some people are very good at it and some people that it's just not their ballywig. And that's okay too, because there's a place for everybody. Everyone has a talent. Um, Barbara Briley Beard, do you have anything left? No, just wanna tell everyone, thank you very, very much for coming. I'm sure we've all learned and taken some good uh, minutes. 
And uh, just thank you very much to the presenters, both to Rita and Tony today. Wonderful. And Pam, for your yes. wealth of knowledge and Valerie, we can't do it without you. Lynn, thank you. Yes, thank you very much, everybody who's helped. Lynn and Sonia, Rita, thank you so much for sharing your knowledge with us. I want to thank Sherry Meyer, Ann Scalbo, Jean Lash, and Joyce Ockjordan for sharing yesterday because um, that comes from somewhere. We had a lot of opinions on what the minute should say and what they shouldn't say. And so I thought, let's just, you know, put something out. It took a while to gather that information. And thank you, Tony, for sharing with us and stepping in at the last minute. You've got a lot of really good stuff here. And you're gonna hear Lynn announce what the next one is in a moment. No two, you don't have to be just that position to come to a workshop. It is very important for any team know the parameters by which each team player is working on. And so come back to all of them during the summer and see what's going on and see what your role is. Because you've already heard me say, I, you know, you, I got to pick my corresponding secretary. I picked somebody I trusted and that knew how to write very neatly and write very kind, wonderful notes. And with Rita, we talk all, all the time. She's taught me how to pronounce some words in Spanish even, which have nothing to do with the minutes, but it has to do with friendship because that dynamic is so important. So Lynn, let us know what's coming up. Okay, uh, our next one is this Friday, June 18th at the same time, 10 a.m. And our subject is new club presidents and president elect. We have had uh, a fair amount of change of club presidents for the new year that they have just stepped in. And we felt that they needed to have some guidance. So we're going to help them along with the things that they know, the things they don't know, the things they need to know. And uh, I'm hoping that uh, all those that are interested in uh, maybe someday becoming the president, starting at your club level or moving up to district, that will attend and bring your questions. We'll have lots of not old, knowledgeable people here to uh, answer your questions. Uh, you, if you have registered for this workshop, you have received all the codes, the links, for all the workshops that we're giving. They were all sent out at once. So just pick and choose what you'd like to come to. And on that day, at that time, put in your code and join us. I would like to remind you that your links come to you as CFWC Reserve California. I know that's quite foreign to what you're expecting, but that's how it's set up and that's how your links come to you. So please don't delete that, open it up and there's all your links for June, July and August. Thank you, Lynn. There's still two more questions. Um, Kathy Lasota, thank you for the compliment. And I did get your email. And you're correct, it's not a Friday or a Monday. It's, it's a different day of the week, but it's the right date, the 25th. Uh, so you had sent me that. And Vina asked, which meeting is on June 29th where you'll discuss the correct names of the club? That's not one of the workshops. That's something I asked the finance team to handle with the district presidents, the district deans, and the district membership people because they're all hopefully moving up through that ladder of positions, because we are getting the same questions over and over again about the taxes, about the forms, about the data blanks, which are the club information forms and things. So that is a meeting where we're gonna go over everything and ask them, do you know what the IRS calls your club? Because you can always go through the Secretary of State and do a name change for a very nominal fee of about 25 to $35, but we need to make sure that people know what those names are. So hopefully by the, by the time that your yearbooks are being printed, probably in August, September, we've got that all sorted out for you. So is that it? Pam, one more quick thing. Let's remind them about the open house tomorrow night, oh, from five right. to seven. 
So we all want to be there with a glass of wine or coffee or Jack yes. Daniels, whatever you like. We just come. We don't really discuss business. We just discuss fun. <laughs> <laughs> So with that said, ladies, we're going to um, stop the recording, know that when it's possible, Sonia will get it up on the Facebook page, and um, we'll see you on Friday, hopefully. Thank you very much for coming. Great workshop, everyone.